Staying in uh, the SEC, the SEC that keeps traveling over to uh, to these other teams, and why don't we talk about the Vanderbilt Commodores, who I had a nice long rant about in today's Q and A on the BetUS show. They are uh, they are a ten and a half point road favorite with a total of forty six and a half at Georgia State, six p.m. Central Time, ESPN Plus. And let me tell you. What is it L.A. Knight says on WWE? Let me talk to you. Number 24 ESPN strength of uh, record thus far. They're number 52 in PPA margin. Georgia State currently is number 122. Uh, this offense for Vanderbilt with Diego Pavia and what Jerry Kill and his former offensive coordinator Tim Beck are doing with that offense, I am a fan. I am a fan. Uh, they don't make a lot of stupid mistakes. They don't turn the ball over much, actually, at all. They're number one in giveaways per game with zero. Uh, but takeaways per game, one and a half per game, number 41 there, so number 17 in turnover margin. Uh, penalties per game could probably be cleaned up a little bit. They're not super explosive, but when you look at them, PPA per pass, number 16, but they only throw the ball 30% of the time. When it comes to running the ball, they run the ball 70% of the time. They're number 57 in PPA per rush. Uh, average field position, they're uh, they're way better in those numbers. Uh, the stats model has got Vanderbilt by 20, 20 and a half. The power rating plus stats model that still has some of the priors built in has Vanderbilt by almost 12. I don't think that this is quite caught up to how good Vanderbilt has played thus far, uh, and I don't necessarily trust Georgia State. Now, I do like their coaching staff, right? Del McGee, uh, Jim Chaney, who's the defense coordinator, Kevin Scherer. Um I think Georgia State will be better as the season progresses. I mean, obviously, Del McGee got in there really late, like after spring practice, or after, I believe, it had started. Yeah, I'm, I'm going with Vanderbilt. And the reason for that, obviously, we're getting the worst of the number here. But I also think this thing could keep going. I like Vanderbilt. Uh, <laughs> let's see. AM all day. If Vandy wins, my over win total for the season hits, and I like the 10.5 for Vandy. Uh, yeah, so I also had Vandy over 2.5, but, I mean, it was super juiced, right? Like minus 200, uh, I think, by the end or before kickoff on uh, on week zero. I think it was like minus 220 at a couple of spots. So I got the minus 200. If you were able to get better than that, because I think it was like three or three and a half at the majority of places before that. So we'd still have one more, but they, I mean, they play Ball State here in a, here in a few weeks. So probably going to get there anyway. And the way that the season is setting up, this Vandy schedule is not as intimidating as it was initially. Um, let's look at it. At Georgia State, at Missouri, obviously Missouri, uh, pretty, that one's going to be pretty rough. But aside from that, uh, bye week, and then they host Alabama. They play at Kentucky, Ball State, Texas, at Auburn, South Carolina, at LSU, Tennessee. Are they going bowling? Probably not. But I think there's a few more wins on there than they maybe expected. So I, I'm buying all the Vandy stock. Like, Diego Pavia is the real deal. That dude will fight you in the street. Like, and I love players like that. So I'm... I'm all about it. Give me Vandy minus 10 and a half on that one. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and follow me on Twitter at GaryWCE. If you want to toss in a question, you can email me Gary at winningcureseverything.com. Make sure and hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you next time.